What is up guys, it's Mr. Lee Redmond here and welcome to episode number 17 of the Dynamo Dresden File. We have now completed the season in the Bundesliga 2nd Division. The final section has not gone too bad, it's actually practically half and half but um, I think I would have to say our final league position doesn't really do justice. It kind of showed how close the division was. Um, I'll show you the position in a second though, you may be able to see it on screen there. Um, so what we'll do is guys, we'll go straight into the fixtures. So our last game was a 1-1 draw of Hanover. 1-1 um, which we drew that game. So we then won and beat Karshula 2-0. Justin Eilers put us in front and uh, Manuel Conrad um, getting sent off for Karshula. And then Nolan and Bemba score and we just 9 minutes to go. We had a bit of an embarrassing defeat, 3-2 at Darmstadt. Who were bot second from bottom. Der Holtz put us in front. Gunders actually equalised for, for them. Tobias Muller made it 2 1 just two minutes later. Um, Gunders scored again to make it 2 2. And then I typically I had Der Holtz injured and within 60 seconds it was 3 2. I wouldn't mind so much. I mean, that, that happens so often players getting injured and then the team scoring. I wouldn't mind it so much if it went for the fact that it just never happens. The other way around, or barely happens the other way around, uh, but we ended up losing two, three, two there, which was a bit embarrassing. We then won two one at Union Berlin. Uh, the Turkechi scoring for us just on the stroke of half time. Then Jala, I think, as I say that equalised for Union just five minutes after half time. But just five minutes later, look at the Holtz made it two one. If Fele was sent off with just fifteen minutes to go, but thankfully we were able to hold on and take a two one win. We lost two one home to Braunschweig. Tobias Muller put us in front with just 10 minutes to go before half time. Unfortunately, Robert Leipertz in the 80th minute and Norman Fekoff in the 83rd minute giving Ron Schrag the win. That was a little bit of a annoying result as well because they were third from bottom when I played that game. We then won 2 1 at the bottom of the table while Alan. They did go in front, Rick Ten Devore putting them in front, but Tobias Muller just six minutes before half time and Justin Eilers with one minute to go from the penalty spot, making it 2 1 to give us the win. We didn't beat English Stad at home 1 0 to Bias Muller, scoring the only goal of the game with 15 minutes to go, giving us two wins out of two. And at this point in the season, we were five points off of the playoff place in third, and we actually had Mainz next, who were third. But unfortunately, we were being 3 1. Pablo de Bias put them 1 0 up in the ninth minute, and then Bruno Nazario made it 2 just after the 25th minute. And then 3 uh, 0 it was to the place. Um, two mains thanks to the Blairs and then we unfortunately we pulled one back through the Holtz but it was too little too late and we weren't able to pull it back and uh, we ended up and that cost us our potential playoff place and then the final game of the season was 2-1 defeat at home to Paderborn Julian Schreiber in the second minute put them 1-0 up Tobias Muller equalising with 12 minutes to go but uh, Schreiber goal with just 22 minutes to go made it 2-1 and that was the end of the season um, the annoying thing in that game was I think they only had about four shots on target where I had about seven or eight and we ended up losing. So we were fifth with two games to go but it shows how close it was by the fact that we end up finishing in 11th place as you can see. I mean we ended up just six points adrift, a third. So winning those two games could have been interesting to say the least but our appalling goal difference at the start of the season cost us quite a bit. Um, as you can see, Bochum ended up staying up thanks to away goals. And English that actually won at Freiburg to um, go up. So um, all three teams got promoted. So Kaiserslautern going up, Mainz and English that. Kaiserslautern, one of Kaiserslautern's defeat was a 2-1 defeat to us. Um, so that's quite good. Player stats, Tobias Muller finished top with 20 goals. Two ahead of Schreiber from Paderborn. Um, and those were the only details really that they had. Um, German third division coming up is Ham St. Pauli and Munster. Ooh, Wolfsburg second team actually did pretty well for once. Um, coming down from the Bundesliga are obviously Freiburg who lost the playoff final, and we've also got 1860 Munich and Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf only won two games. Wolfsburg and Munchen Gladbach. So um the Wolfsburg are fourth. 
Um, so yeah, we've got Bayern obviously winning the league, Schalke second, Dortmund third, and Wolfsburg in fourth, taking the Champions League spots. Bremen, Köln, and Leverkusen um, taking fifth, sixth, and seventh, and the German places in Europa League. And who was it that took the cup? And that is Bayern Munich who beat Köln on penalties. So yeah, so that's done pretty well there. Let's have a look at uh, some other details. Oops, wrong one. Um, let's have a look at Europe. So, Schalke have obviously made the final because they beat Juventus. No, Bayern read that wrong. Sorry, Bayern beat Juventus in the final, and uh, Valencia beat Tottenham in the Europa League final. So, yeah, that's not going too bad. Um, has the World Cup? So I don't think it has, but we will just check the World Cup. I don't think it's started yet. Um, let's have a look. Uh, wrong one. Not yet. We've got. I was just under three weeks to go, and um, something I completely forgot about um, is this: the Nations League. Oh, that's actually being drawn today. I'm actually, I have to admit, I'm really looking forward to this in real life. And I think, to be fair, I'm going to spend more time checking out um, the bottom division just to see the teams that get promoted. Because I don't know if it's like this in FM15. I don't think it was in FM14. But I do know that in real life, um, one team from each nation's league or each division will actually be qualifying for Euro 2020. So we could have a potentially lower, lesser nation making it. So possibly like um, like someone like uh, Moldova or Georgia or someone like that. Um, so here we go. So England have Germany and Poland. That is interesting, especially with the teams finishing bottom going down. Um There's quite a few strong nations missing from there. So England and obviously Germany and Poland. I believe the way it's done is... Um, yeah, there we go. So... Um, oh my God, what was I thinking? I've completely lost my train of thought now. What is it? Um, right, that's it. You play each team twice. The top four teams... Uh, the top... Sorry, the top... The, the, oh my God, the group winners... Going to a semi final and final, and the um, winner of the final is the team guaranteed to qualify for the Nations League, uh, the Euro 2020. I do believe that is the case in real life as well. Um, so let's have a look at the teams potentially missing. So Portugal is one of the stronger teams missing, Belgium as well, because this is all done actually on um, Euro the, the rankings. So group. Um, so nations C, Sweden, bloody hell, Czech Republic, interesting, and Group D. This is what I want to look at because I'd just love to see potentially someone like Andorra, Faroe Islands, Malta, Jamaica, Gibraltar would be classic. Someone like that making it to um, into the nations into the Europa League. So um, we've been going four years, and Gibraltar's yet to win the game. So Drew Chinese Taipei, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Dora Macedonia, Malta. They're unbeaten in two games, which is quite funny. Um, Euro qualifiers, they scored a goal in the defeat of Germany, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, so they've been drawn against Latvia, Moldova, and Belarus. Yeah, they're going to struggle massively there, to be quite honest. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I would say the way it's going to work is obviously the team finishing top is going to go up, and in my view, that will be um, Cyprus, potentially Georgia. I think that would be the decider: that's Cyprus or Georgia. Um, I'd probably say Belarus from Group Two, Group Three. You'd have to say Albania, and Group Four would have to be Hungary. 
Um, so that's how it's going to roll, and the fact it's in September as well, which is pretty cool. Um, and I and now changed in the thing as well, which is quite interesting. Um, so I think that's how it's going to go, guys. It'll be quite interesting to see, and I'm really looking forward to that. To be fair. Um, so yeah. I've waffled on enough, so that is it for this episode, guys. Leave some likes, leave some comments, subscribe, would appreciate it all. Tune in next time for the first the review of the first quarter. So we're taking the preseason, we're taking transfers, we're taking the first amount of games as well. Um, leave, like I said, leave some likes, leave some comments, subscribe, appreciate it all, and tune in next time for the next episode. Until then, guys, as always, take us.